Okay, perfect. Uh, now, here's my, actually my favorite part of the night. Um, let's do this. If you guys can hear me okay, um, just go ahead and type in the chat window uh, where you guys are coming from and um, where, you're, where you're dialing in from around the world. And I'll try to keep up uh, and go as fast as I can to read off the uh, read off the name. So, all right. So type in, let me know where you're, where you're coming from. Just kind of show you the reach of, uh, of clients that we have. And okay, I'm going to go. All right. New York, Maryland, Houston, Vegas, Greenbrier, West Virginia, Long Island, Montana, Geneva, Minnesota, Sydney, uh, Smithfield, Mexico, uh, Branson, Missouri, uh, New York, Perth, uh, Washington, another Sydney, uh, Chamonix, love that. Pennsylvania, Colorado. Okay, I can't, I can't keep up anymore. But all right, Jersey Shore. There you go. Welcome, my Jersey brother. Um, all right, good. So you guys can hear me okay. We're recording. We're on. Um, and then before we jump in here, guys, just type in like you did. Um, who is trading options? Um, you could just say yes, I'm trading options. No, I'm not trading options. And if you want to give me a little bit of commentary. Um, you know, are you new? Are you experienced? You know, it'll help me kind of gauge where we want to go with this presentation. I have a pretty good outline of, uh, of where we're headed, but, you know, depending on, you know, what's most beneficial to you guys, um, then, um, you know, it'll, I'll, I'll tailor it that way. So, um, okay. So let me know newbie, um, a lot of experience, good experience, bad experience, um, Okay, perfect. Uh, a lot of stock experience, know what I really want to learn. Intermediate experience, no, not trading options, options newbie. Okay, perfect. And I got a lot of yeses in there. Uh, and then, guys, the no's, tell me who's not trading as well. I got a lot of yeses, but I didn't see a lot of no's. A couple no's in there. Okay, uh, so let's go. Uh, fun, fun times right now in the, uh, in the markets. Um, options are... Um, it's really the hottest growing segment right now in the markets. And um, what we're going to do here tonight is I'm going to show you some high probability uh, techniques to generate income as well as generating wealth building trades. Okay, wealth building is really what we want to do. There's two kinds of trades that we put on um, for, for our clients as well as when I trade in my own accounts. Okay, so we want to look most importantly at the high probability trades, okay, to really be generating um, income, okay. So this is really what we want to focus on: high probability trades, okay. Now, um, here's one thing with options that I think a lot of people um, have a hard time with, and not so much that they have a hard time with, but they try to hide from the charts and market direction. OK, if you're doing that, you are going to do two things. You're going to chop up your account. Your account value is going to do this. OK, and number one, uh, the number one reason is because of commissions. OK, I'll just do commish. OK, if you are and that's ugly, but if you are trading a lot without any kind of um, acknowledgement of where the market's going, your account's going to do that and your commission bill is going to go like that. Okay. The best opportunities that we can find in the options markets are when we can see a coming market move. That's not going to be all the time. Okay. That's going to be about 20% of the time. There are 80% of the times when we want to be trading in a directionless market. And that's one of the great benefit of, of options is we can make money in a directionless market. But we don't want to ignore the possibility and the, the real opportunity to make money in a direction market. And that's really what we specialize here in here at Trading Analysis is picking a direction. And we do it with a very specific set of tools. Okay. Um, time decay is a very important component of options. Uh, if you're new to options or if you've gotten beat up and maybe let me know, um, those of you in here who um, 
maybe have had a bad initial experience with options? And if so, was it uh, a purchase of an option and did it just not work? Um, let me know who's been through that before. Um, and then finally, we want to determine our best probability zones uh, for trading options. Okay, so we're going to take a, a, a twofold approach here. We are going to um, show you how to pick the best direction trades for maximum profit. And we're also going to show you how to take advantage of time decay uh, in the, the, the majority of our trades, which are um, range bound strategies. Okay. Um, so, you know, Sun Tzu has been, has been the work, his work has been applied to trading in so many different times. And I love this, this saying, every battle is won before it's fought. And I believe a trade is the same way. Uh, you know, we do a lot of preparation. Um, we do a lot of analysis of the options market. We do a lot of analysis of the underlying before we move into a trade. Um, it's, um, I think it puts, uh, the more experienced trader and the professional trader ahead of the of the newer trader. Okay, the newer trader kind of sits down at the trading desk and goes, boom, fires first and then aims, right? I think the, the best way to succeed in the market is to be have most of your work done uh, before the trade ever goes on. You know, it's like, it's like presentations, you know, I'm, I'm a trader, but, uh, in the last 10 years or so, I've, I've done a lot of presentations. And at first I had a hard time. I was nervous doing the presentations and, you know, we have a big room here and, you know, I'm not really nervous anymore, but I was, and I found that, you know, to do good presentations, the key is preparation. And once you're in, once you come up to a presentation, whether it's at a trade show or a webinar, um, you, there's nothing to be nervous about because you're prepared. A trade is really no different. If you've done your work ahead of time, um, you should have confidence to go into the trade knowing that your bases are covered. If it doesn't work, it's not a good presentation, okay. At least you did everything you could, you could to prepare for a winning trade or a winning presentation, okay? Um, why options? Um, Okay, so here's the deal. I've traded everything here. Um, I started out as a stock tra stock day trader when I was like 21 in San Diego. I've scalped options, I've scalped futures, and I've I scalped stocks. Here's what I find. Futures are good for scalping, but about 90% of the retail traders out there don't have an account big enough to trade futures on an intraday basis. Okay, The commissions are going to eat you alive. They are going to kill you. Um, you need to have an exchange seat. Uh, you need to be on the floor and trade for pennies for contracts um, to even have a shot of doing that. Um, the other thing is you have less than, say, a $250,000 account. You don't have enough capital to properly position size in the futures market for more than a one or two point scalp. So if you're just scalping around futures intraday and you have less than a quarter million in your account, you will lose money. I guarantee you it. Okay. Um, stocks and ETFs, they're great for investments. Um, you're just trying to keep up with or maybe beat the S&P for very large accounts, uh, but there's no leverage in there. You're not going to get anything done. You know, if you, you know, the best years, you know, with stocks going straight up like they have over the last five, six years, I mean, maybe you can outpace um, the S&P, but that's not a trader's market. Okay. The other kind of uh, trading that we're going to look at here is selling option premium. Okay, that's good for for targeting income trades, right? So that's that's good for uh, people who are looking to make about 25, maybe 30, maybe 40 percent a year. Okay, um, the other kind of trading that we're going to focus on here is um, option buying option premium. That's for aggressive portfolio building, looking for 50 plus percent return a year. Uh, we are going to concentrate on a hybrid of selling option premium and buying option premium. If you don't know what premium means, no problem. We are going to cover it. All right. Mark, I keep donating to the futures markets. Ain't that the truth, brother? I can tell you it's geared against you. It's just it. You can't pay the commissions that the, the, the exchanges need you to pay and make money with the volatility that we see in this market. It can't be done. You need to stretch that time frame out. And trust me, I've been through it before, so I hear you. Um, Hector, you really always make nice work. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so option trading. Pretty cool article just came out on the from the CME. 
um, they just traded a record number of options, 64 million options traded. You can see the growth trajectory from January 2009 up to September 14th, 2014. Options are exploding. Um, it is just the absolute hot spot. Um, I come from a stock trading background. As I said, I was a uh, day trader in San Diego out of college. I actually traded all through college out of my dorm room, never went to class. My economics professors just kind of passed me because they knew I was just, you know, wrapped up in the markets, never went to class, but whatever. Um, so options are exploding. Um, and, and what I found basically is through trading stocks um, and then I moved over to the foreign exchange markets, which was still kind of like trading stocks. It's it's a spot market. It's a cash market. You need to have stops. OK, all the time. And I just kind of got tired of having stops go off um, based on an analysis that might eventually be correct. Um, options are a great way to quantify your risk. You can do it in a very safe manner. You can do it without stop losses, which is amazing, which is I, I, I trust me, I can't believe we're we're saying this. But through the style of analysis that we're going to show you, you can actually trade without stop losses and still contain your risk. Okay, um, so like I said, our goal is ag aggressive account growth. Uh, we're doing it in the options market. We're going to learn to harness the leverage uh, while defining risk, as I just said. Talk about the difference between income and, and wealth building trades. And then most importantly, use advanced technical analysis to identify the best markets to deploy your options strategies. Okay, now here's an important thing to keep in mind uh, before we really dive into the content. And that is... The markets, the options markets are rigged against you. There is no doubt about it. You are, if you've lost money in the options market, it's because they are absolutely rigged against you. Okay, most new traders come in, buy out of the money options, hoping they're going to make a ton of money. You know, let's say, um, you know, let's say Apple is at 100. They say, okay, I can buy a 105 call option for about $3. Okay, if it goes up to 107, I should sell that option for call $7, $3 purchase, $7 sold. I made over 100% return, and people are like, cha ching. Fortunately, that's how it's designed to take your money and pick your pockets. Okay, that is not option trading, that is gambling. Okay, over 90% of options expire worthless. This is by design and is meant to allow the option market makers to pick your pockets through time decay. Time decay is something we are going to focus on. So if you're new, you come and you buy options, you know, you're trying to hit that home run and you see that option go against you and lose money, you have fallen victim to the market makers, which are right here, MM. And make no mistake, market makers are there to pick your pocket. All right, so we have a mathematical edge over the market makers with our non-traditional advanced tools of technical analysis. Okay, We can trade with the probabilities in our favor, but we can enhance that edge with our non-traditional tools of technical analysis. Okay, And as dangerous as options can be, they can be equally and opposite as safe and risk averse when done correctly. I don't know if that's proper English, but I think you get my point. All right. As dangerous as options can be by just buying out of the money calls, they can be equally and opposite. I'm going to, I'm going to make up a word oppositely and please tell me um, the correct English. Um, that would be great. Um, equal and opposite on the other side, we can do it as safe and risk averse and risk defined as we want. Okay. Options are just as safe to trade as they are dangerous to trade. And I hope that makes sense. And no other asset class can say that, okay? Commodities can be lethal. Stocks going out of business, stock just holding shares of stock can be lethal. Stock index futures that, that crash can be lethal. But with options, you can do it in the most safe manner possible. And that's the way we like to trade. And we do it time and time and time again to build account equity. Um, yeah, inverse, yep, yeah, I think you're right. Okay. Um, so just kind of driving this home, um, 
there was a study back in the in the in the late 90s um this was on the way up in the in the in the uh major bull market uh, over on the cme um 61 6.1 million options were exercised 20 million were uh expired worthless okay and this is in a massive bull market kind of like we have now all right so about 76 percent of the options way back then uh, expired worthless now there's a lot more trading of options and that number is higher so a massive amount of options uh, expire worthless. And if you are long options, you have a 76% chance, and I think more, of not making money. So I think we've driven that point home. We need to get you trading the other way. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, some of you probably know me. Some of you probably have no idea who I am. Uh, I'm Todd Gordon, and I run TradingAnalysis.com. Uh, it's my wife, Trish, and my two boys, Jake and Brody don't know who's who because they look a lot alike. Um, and you definitely can't tell because they're more interested in the ocean in this picture. Um, Mary, conversely, thank you. Conversely, that's what I needed. Thank you. Uh, I've been on CNBC a lot, uh, over 200 times, and I've uh, been on variety shows, Money in Motion and Fast Money and Squawk on the Street. And that's my buddy, Melissa Lee. And um, yep, so CNBC has been fun. And talking about being prepared, um, that was fun learning to go on TV um, it, you know you need to be prepared have your talking points uh, set be early or else you definitely will be nervous so kind of along that same lines of trade preparation um, I am married I went shopping for uh, uh, groceries one night met my wife got married got fired at my own wedding <laughs> um, that's the cool thing about trading I've been able to meet um, you know some of my heroes along the way and um, <laughs> and yep Trump was at my wedding uh, in in uh, New Jersey and I was fired at my own wedding and everyone was laughing at me so that's fine um, now I live at home uh, in New Jersey with my boys and my wife uh, that's me at the trading desk and I run uh, as I said trading analysis uh, with um, I have uh, the professor uh, Jackie Fogg, who is in Sydney, uh, have Rosa Lascano, my director of operations, uh, and then we have um, a few others helping us along the way. So that's tradinganalysis.com. Enough about me, let's go. Um, option basics, here we go. But first, do I really trade? And I think if, um, you know, there's so many people out there who have an internet connection and a webcam who say they're traders and they can teach you what to do, but you know, do they really trade? Um, yes, I do trade. Um, this is a trade I put on today that actually we're going to talk about it as an example. Um, I did this in the NDX, the NASDAQ. I did it in the Iron Condor in the NDX. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, this is just one of my accounts. Um, proud to say in just a $50,000 account, I've generated almost 10% in commissions year to date, 4,600 in commission. So yes, I trade, I trade very actively. Um, I trade several accounts between Thinkorswim, TradeStation, um, Interactive Brokers. So I have a variety of different accounts, uh, trade a uh, variety of different strategies, uh, some of which I'm gonna talk about tonight. Uh, this was the actual trade that we're going to talk about. This was my uh, NDX Iron Condor. Um, so a little, little interesting trade. And this is something that um, those of you who are newer to options, you're going to have a hard time at first with, which, okay, let's take a look at the risk profile in this trade. Uh, this NDX, which is the NASDAQ, I was risking $3,300 to make $1,625 on this Condor. Okay. Um, so the trade was uh, executed. I did get that iron condor off uh, with the 4160, 4210, 3760, 3710 iron condor, which was filled. And there is the open position. So yes, I trade. I've traded for a hedge fund um, on Wall Street before. I went out on my own, uh, gained capital. We had at one point just under $100 million under management. I was one of the six guys on the team trading. Um, and uh, I really got to learn a lot about the trading business, uh, trading for the fund. Before that, I traded uh, full-time in San Diego uh, as, with a day trading firm. I also traded for a CTA, a commodity trading advisor that specialized in um, futures. Um, so I've, I've definitely traded around a bit. Now I have my own business, trade my own accounts, and, uh, and run trading analysis, which uh, is really my, my love. So um, there's nothing else I really 
want to do or probably could do in this world and that's 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 my life so um okay so let's go options just a quick review um if you are new to options do not worry this is a little bit more advanced um than than the beginner um uh, beginner webinar we are going to do something that is geared for beginners in exactly two weeks and i'll give you the details on that but we are doing a little bit more advanced so if you're new don't be scared in two weeks we can completely start from scratch and make you understand um it really cut down the learning curve so uh option okay so google uh, we're looking at a when google is back at 579 dollars we were looking at a july 14 570 call Okay, the call is trading for $19.25. Okay, there are two parts to an option. Okay, there's intrinsic and extrinsic value. All that means, intrinsic basically means how much it's in the money. Okay, so if Google's trading $579, all right, um, and we're looking at $570 calls, this is about eight or nine dollars in intrinsic value because it's about eight or nine dollars in the money. I rounded up on these on these numbers right here. That's fine. So it's about eight or nine dollars in the money. The rest of the of the nineteen dollar uh, call option is extrinsic value, and this is really the key. Extrinsic is really where the minutia is, and that is a combination of of time left in the option and, and volatility in the underlying. And again, if you're not sure what the word volatility is, don't worry. I will explain it. So there's two components to an option. If an option's out of the money, meaning Google's trading at 579 and you're looking at 580 calls, there is no intrinsic value because it's not in the money. It's $1 away from being in the money. And everything that um, makes up that option price will be extrinsic value, which again is time left until the expiration as well as volatility in the underlying as well as the overall market. Okay, so that's that. Just a quick review. Uh, we'll leave that for now. Um, but what we want to do is um, <laughs> put the probabilities on our side. Living New Jersey, well, as long as you're not a Giants fan, I'll become a member. Graham, I grew up a Giants fan. True story. Um, we lived in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is just across when I worked on Wall Street, just across the, the river from uh, lower lower Manhattan. And uh, we actually lived in the same building as Eli. So we got to see Eli uh, quite a bit. And my wife actually got his autograph like three days after the Super Bowl. He was like walking his dog downstairs. He had bad head. My wife ran up to him at like 630 in the morning and got his autograph. It's pretty funny. So yeah, I grew up a Giants fan. Sorry, brother. Um, all right. So let's go. Um, we're going to dive into high probability strategies using standard deviation and applied volatility. Scary words. I got it. They're not scary. Okay. So let's take a look to get started here at um, the option statistics in TLT. This was the bond ETF. Um, we're trading TLT. Actually got slapped around a little bit in TLT today. Um, not good, but that happens. Okay. Um, so here are the option stats for TLT. Okay. Calls, puts. All right. What I want to look at is the deltas. And basically all that means, delta is basically a fancy word for the percent chance that this option will expire in the money, okay? If it's a 100% chance, it's a 100 delta, that means there's a 100% chance it's going to finish in the money. That means if it's like a 100 call option and the underlying is trading at like 99 or 98. It's in the money. It's probably going to expire in the money. So it's a 100% chance of finishing in the money. It's probably going to be more than that. Okay. Down here, deltas of 0, 20s, 30s, and 40s basically means it has a 20, 30, 40% of finishing in the money. That's, a, that's an outside chance. Okay. Those of you who are option traders, I know what you're saying. You're going to say, Todd, I thought delta basically means if the underlying moves a dollar, the option will move 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, depending on the delta. Another way to put it is the same thing is saying it basically has a 20, 30, 40% chance of finishing in the money, depending on the delta. So here's my point. TLT today, 72% of the options were traded with a delta less than 40. Okay, so 0 to 40. So that means, let's call it an average of 30. 36 plus 36 is 72%. Three quarters of the options today traded with a 30% chance of finishing in the money. 
Okay. Now, other option traders would say, well, Todd, okay, I see the point you're making, which is a lot of people are just kind of taking punts on, on these guys. All right. So if people just think, all right, bonds broke out. So people are trading a bunch of downside put options. They think the bond market's going to reverse. And they say, well, Todd, they could be getting long by selling these puts. I say, okay, possibly. I know what you're saying, but look at this stat traded at the ask or above. Basically, if you trade on the ask, you are trading what the market maker is asking you to pay, which means you're getting long. So 31%, which was, which was a pretty high percent of, of all the, um, the, the locations of the trades were on the offer or on the ask, which means basically pulling that together, 72% of the options were traded at a 30% chance of being in the money, which means they're way out of the money puts, okay, way out of the money puts, and people were buying those puts today. My whole point is if you have a 70% chance of losing money, okay, said differently, there's only a 30% chance on average these these options are going to finish in the money and you're long. A third of the traders out there are saying, okay, I'm probably not going to make money in these trades. So guys, this is why so many people lose money with options is because they're just long and they're long out of the money options with very little chance of making any money. We've got to stop that. Okay. Um, yeah, TL, Mary, for sure. TLT broke out pretty hard today. Um, I kind of tuck tailed and ran today. We put on some positions to take advantage of it. Um, so, okay. So let's go. Um, IWM. We're looking at the Russell. All right. So if we're going to start identifying where to trade in the options markets, you've, you know, where do we start? You know, what, what, what levels do we look at? We have a 200 day moving average and a trend line. Okay. How do you know, how do you make money with this? Honestly, somebody tell me, how do you make money with this? The first time the 200-day moving average and trend line support held, it didn't hold perfectly. It dipped a couple bucks below, then rallied up, then came back, and we retested the trend line and the 200-day moving average, and then we broke down. Okay, so you know, if we're going to start picking levels to begin trading options, how can we make money if we're looking at the same things that everyone else is looking at? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think a trend line in a moving average is, is is as ambiguous as you could get. First time it works, next time it doesn't work. Okay, so I think we need to find different ways to begin trading options at levels that are not as highly visible and obvious to the marketplace. I'm on CNBC all the time, and I can't tell you, oh my God, how many times people kept talking about this 50 and 200 day moving average cross, which really is meaningless. Okay, it's a lot of the newer technical analysts coming in who can just look at a quick chart and say, oh, this is what's going to happen. Guys, we need to get inside of price action a little bit and pick out levels that other people can't really find. Okay. So we're going to leave that for now. Um, and we're going to start getting into theta and time decay before we uncover those advanced tools of technical analysis. Um, a, a component, as we already mentioned, of options is time. Okay. And time is a melting asset. It's a depreciating asset. Okay, I love this picture of this little polar bear. It makes no sense if you think about it because polar bears can swim in cold wa in cold water. It really doesn't make any sense, but I thought it illustrated it pretty well of um, of the ice melting below this guy's feet. Okay, um, so we need to know when to buy and when to sell options. If options are a depreciating asset because of time, time is is part of the valuation of options. Okay, we already know that about 90% of options expire worthless. So 90% of the time, buying out of the out of the money options is a sucker's play because that ice is melting below your feet. But there are times when you want to buy options. Majority of the time, you want to sell options, okay, and sell option premium to stack the odds in your favor. There are times to buy options and there's times to sell options. About 20-30% of the time, we buy options at trading analysis, and 70-80% of the time, we sell them. Okay. There are very specific times to be short premium and there's long and there are very specific times to be long premium. There's two method there's two kind of check checklists you want to look at here, two factors that come into your decision. The level of implied volatility and the Elliott wave position. Okay. Now, those of you who are new to options and have, have gone through this experience like I have, I'm sorry, and it sucks, but this is why the options are stacked um, in your favor. 
the uh, the odds are not stacked in your favor and stacked in the market makers favor. OK, so let's take a look at GoPro. Um, let's say the trader on this breakout day, this nice candle bought Gro GoPro, bought $65 calls when GoPro is trading $60. This indicator down here is the level of implied volatility. OK, now how can this play out? Market goes up. All right, pulls back a little bit. Yeah, okay, I'm going to sell into the old high here. So basically, bought GoPro at 60, sold it up around 67. If you did this with the 65 calls when the stock was at 60, sold those same 65 calls when the stock moved up to 67, $7 is not chump change. You lost money on that trade. You did not make money. Why? There's two factors. That extrinsic value of the option was working against you. Implied volatility decreased. That's the first part of the extrinsic value, implied volatility, volatility compressed, and also theta, which is that depreciating ice melting under your feet asset. So there's nothing worse than buying GoPro at 60, selling it at 67, and losing money because your options are worth less. Okay, I really, really want to drive that point home that buying options um, in anything other than the, the most ideal circumstances uh, will get you um, uh, will um, be a loser's game. OK, basically implied volatility will determine the level of option pricing. Higher the implied volatility, it will increase the prices of all options, calls and puts. OK. As implied volatility is decreasing, the price of all options will move lower. Okay, all volatility is is basically the uh, the expected back and forth movement around a central trend. Okay, you can have a very smooth trend. Oops, let me go up. You can have a very smooth trend with not a lot of back and forth ebbs and flows. That'll be a low volatility market. You can have a central trend with a lot of back and forth movement which is high volatility okay what when you are in times of high volatility buying options is very dangerous okay understanding implied volatility is crucial to your success as a trader now let's get our mind around this when volatility is high expected price movements is great are great both the puts and calls are more expensive when volatility is low, and I'm talking implied volatility, how much volatility there is to be expected in the future, both puts and calls are less expensive. If a market is deemed to be coming into a volatile period, option protection gets more expensive. If we're coming up on a major event like GoPro, releasing that GoPro 4 camera, um, you know, any kind of uh, earnings, anything that anything that is deemed to bring volatility in the market, option prices are going to expand because people are buying protection against that event that's coming up. So option prices are going to get more expensive, both puts and calls. Okay. So further, the more price moves up and down, once that event comes, the greater the chance an option will go from out of the money to in the money. Okay. So you can actually make money, right? If an option is doing, if, if an underlying is doing this up and down and up and down, there's a greater chance your strike, whatever it may be, will go in the money and you can make money on the trade. So the market makers are going to make you pay for it. All right. So as implied volatility gets higher, option prices go up. You could use this to your advantage. Okay. Volatility is a mean reverting. Okay, what that means is volatility does not do this like price trends. That's price. Okay. I'm writing with my mouse. That's that's why it's so bad. My handwriting is bad, but it's not that bad. That's price. Volatility is mean reverting. It's constantly in a trend. Or it's constantly in a range, excuse me. Range, range. Where that's this is a trend. That's a range. Volatility trades like that. It goes sideways. So there's points where it's very overbought, and there's times when it's very oversold. Okay. You want to be able to time when options are cheap, when options are expensive. Okay. And the market makers know exactly what they're doing because they set the levels. Okay. They set the levels of where options are trading. It is based on um, algorithms and it's based on option um, valuation models, but market makers know what it's know what they're doing.
okay? They actually have options and strikes that are set to, to they know what's going to expire in the money, what's what's not going to expire in the money. Um, it's a big time inside game, but there's times where we can take advantage of that. Okay, so we put it on our trade today in the FXY with clients. Um, here's the setup. Um, we're looking at bonds, gold, dollar, and S&P. If you guys didn't notice, S&P's got rocked today. Uh, and the dollar, interestingly, sold off with the stock market today. Okay, gold was kind of bid, but sold off in the close, and then bonds were just super, super bid. Okay, so uh, we did a trade in FXY, which is the yen ETF. Okay, and this is the trade. I did an 89.91 call spread, so I bought a thousand shares, uh, 10 contracts for the 89 call in November, and sold the 91 call for a spread. So, dollar 72, I paid sold the 91 calls for 70 cents. So I paid about a dollar. Basically I'm risking a thousand dollars to make a thousand dollars. Oops. Uh, from current slot. I did not mean to do that. We'll get back to that. Um, I hit the escape button. So we put on the FXY trade today and let me get back. There's our cool polar bear. And okay. So we did that. All right. Now, Oh my God. My computer's going crazy. Okay, so looking at the FXY chart, we're looking at the level of implied volatility. We actually see that it's pretty high. And as I said above, we went long the FXY by buying the 89 calls. And you just say, well, Todd, you spent the last 15 minutes telling me to not buy options, okay, in expensive markets. Because if that volatility were to go down, I could lose money on that trade. I think it's as simple as looking at the longer term implied volatility picture. Here's the implied volatility of the yen. This thing has been decreasing since June of 2013. And we've just recently broken out of downtrend resistance in implied volatility. You can do technical analysis in implied volatility and do it all the time. <clears throat> so this little guy up here is a little indicator on thicker swim that basically says anytime you're above 50% um, implied volatility percent, you want to be short premium. I disagree. I completely disagree because this is this percent rank here. It's called IV percentile is only looking at a very recent history. You got to look at where implied volatility has been over the last couple of years. The yen is really just starting to break out in terms of volatility. So I don't want to be short volatility. This is an okay time to be long. Um, long call options and not short options because this implied volatility can certainly go up and move back in towards the upper end of its volatility range. Okay, let's take a look at Apple. All right, this is Apple and on a two-year time frame. Okay, this is the Apple Daily. I, I captured this at the close. You can kind of divide the volatility chart in half. All right, there's times when you want to be short premium and there's times when you want to be buying premium. And when I say short premium and long premium, all that means is buying and selling options. That's it. It's just a fancy term to make me feel cool when I say premium. So up here, you want to be short options. Down here, you want to be long options. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with being short um, up until this midpoint resistance. But once you kind of break above, you definitely want to be short, all right? I would not want to be shorting premium down here mid-range at the lower half of this, uh, of, this, of this range here. Okay, you want to be short premium at the midpoint and up in here, okay? At this point, you want to be long. And that means if you want to take a bearish position on, on Apple, it's a good time to be buying puts because relatively speaking, the implied volatility is in the lower half of the range, which means those options are cheap. Uh, Steve, I did not get filled on the 8988 puts. Um, and what I tried to do was um, finance. I tried to sell a uh, downside uh, call credit. What I tried to do, I tried to sell a, sell a downside put credit spread to finance the purchase of the uh, of the debit. And I didn't get filled, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that's that. So that's Apple. Um, now let's get into time decay. We, we touched on that quickly. And, and options are a depreciating um, asset. And we can use that to our advantage. This is a little uh, slope of how much extrinsic value is left in an option as we get closer to expiration. So we're starting at nine months to expiration, six, three, and zero. Percent of the uh, extrinsic value remaining. 
you can see we lose um, 10% in the first uh, from nine months to three months. Oh, sorry, nine months to six months. That's a three month period. And then we go from 90% left to 60% left. So we just lost 30% um, in three months. And here's when things really get rocking, 60% down to zero in three months. So in the first three months, we lose 10%. The next three months, we lose 30%. And then in the last three months, we lose 60%. If you are playing the game of shorting premium against overbought implied volatility, there is a time frame that is ideal, which is the greatest loss of premium, which is right around, this is the steepest point right in here about 45 days to go. And what's very cool about that is that is right now, okay? If you look at, um, if you look at days to expiration, the Novembers, the monthlies are exactly 45 days to go. This is the ideal time to be selling options at the 45 day mark. The guys over at Thinkorswim have done a ton of research on this. Uh, Saznov has done a ton of research on this, really smart. Um, 45 days is the ideal time, and that's to get the maximum depreciation of the extrinsic value to get the steepest part of the curve, 45 days to go. And we are right at that 45 day mark for um, the November monthly option. So that's a pretty cool point. Uh, so we're actually looking to do a lot of trades. So standard deviations, here we go. I know um, if your eyes are glance, or kind of glassing over mine did too when I first saw this in school, but it's important. Basically, when we find the right times to sell premium, we can use this distribution curve to our favor. <clears throat> now, there's something called one, two, and three standard deviations. Basically, what that means is if you are looking for a market to stay inside of minus one standard deviation to plus one standard deviation, all you do is you add up these percentages. That's 68.2. The option market makers have it calculated to know what the standard deviations are, and they price options accordingly. Okay, Options that are outside of, of the 68%, Okay, so this is the median price. Options that are cheaper than this and more expensive than this, okay, or sorry, are outside of the strikes. So let's say this is $50 and the one standard deviation is $5. So here's the $50 current market price, a $5 standard deviation plus one. Anything above $55 strike is going to be more than a plus one standard deviation. Okay, those options are going to get really, really cheap and look really good to you. Here's the same thing, $50 strike or $50 current price. A minus one standard deviation is minus uh, $5. So it'd be a $45. Anything $45 or less in terms of puts are going to be very cheap and look very attractive to you. But this, the market has it priced that it's going to stay inside of a plus and minus one standard deviation 68% of the time, right? So that means you have 13 plus 6 plus 2 plus 0.1. You have like a 15% chance that that put is ever going to see uh, profitability. If you buy something above that 50 to $55, you have 13.6 plus 2% plus 0.01. You have like a 15% chance that that call option is ever going to see profitability. Okay, so, so by using these probabilities, we can immediately put trades on that have a 68% or greater chance of success. And that's what we're looking to do. Okay. Um, so let's, so let's go with this. Um, here's another trade. Um, I didn't do it in the IWM, but I did it in the NASDAQ today with, uh, with customers, um, IWM daily, uh, iron condor. Okay. Um, so that's a great question. Um, and I, let me get through this example. I'm going to come back and definitely answer that. Um, so here we go. Um, this is 45 days to go. Here's how you'd set up a plus and minus one standard deviation trade. This is IWM, the Russell ETF. Um, IWM closed at 106.82, plus and minus one standard deviation, 675. How do you get that? Okay. Just go over here, uh, trade. Let's get on to Novembers. Um, there we go, Novembers. Close 106.92, and this little number right here, 22.32%, that's the plus and minus one standard deviation. 
Okay, so you add six dollars and seventy-four cents to the closing, and you subtract six dollars and seventy-four cents from the closing, and that gives you one thirteen sixty-six and ninety-nine sixty. This is the plus and minus one standard deviation. Okay, this market IWM has a thirty-four percent plus thirty-four percent, which is sixty-eight, has a sixty-eight percent chance of staying inside of these two levels. A lot of traders are gonna come in today and tomorrow and sell the 113.66 uh, calls on the top side, sell the 99.60 puts on the downside. Um, you can do it naked, you know, which would be, um, you know, short of, short of straddle, they call it. Um, or you can do it with uh, iron condors, which is basically just buying a higher call and buying a, a lower put to, to define your risk. Uh, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And a lot of people are going to come in and do those trades, which is fine. But everybody knows about that. Okay. It, everybody knows about this. Okay. I think once we start adding other components to it, we can in increase the amount of money we can make on this trade while keeping our probabilities the same. So this trade that we talked about, which is um, selling the 113 calls and, and selling the 99 puts. Let me just go back up. 113, 99. So we're going to sell the 113s calls, sell the 99 puts. We're going to do a dollar wide by buying a lower put and by buying a higher call, $1 away. You are defining your risk. Okay. This, this trade has a 77% chance of success, which is awesome. Okay. We can collect 36 cents. What that means is 36 cents or $36 per one lot. If you're doing 10 lots for 1,000 shares, it's $360. You can have a 77% chance of success by doing this trade. Now, here's where the advanced technicals come in. I'm a big, big fan, and I've been trading Elliott and teaching Elliott, and I've got clients in 40 countries around the world who use Elliott every single day. I'm going to show you how we can actually increase the amount of money we can make on this trade while keeping the probabilities the same. Very basic, Elliot, before we get in. I believe IWM is in a downtrend. It's a five-wave move. Okay, A good Elliot trend has um, five waves. Three of them are trend waves. So the first is your trend wave. The middle is your trend wave. And then we have another trend wave connected by two intervening corrective waves. And one of the basic rules is wave four should not move into the area of wave two. Basically all it's saying is the corrections need to be removed from each other. So if this trade, if we want to kind of dial in the amount of money we can make on this trade, we know from Elliott that wave four should not move above 110. Okay, and this is the trade that we actually set up today. We did it in the NASDAQ. Okay, we didn't do it in the, in the IWM, we did it in the NASDAQ. I think the uh, NASDAQ has a little further to fall. Uh, the Russell's been weak. I think the NASDAQ's now picking up. Um, so what we can do now is rather than selling all the way up at 113, we can use the rules of Elliott, which we're going to go over in a second, and we can push it all the way down to 110. All right, we should not get above 109.86, which is wave count validation. Elliott has built-in risk reward, built-in trade plan, so we can really squeeze that um, that sh the sale of the call a lot lower. Uh, we will then keep the same downside put because this is um, this Fibonacci level is the downside target that we'll use for it. So we're going to keep that 99 put the same. Okay, so now. Here's the original trade. We have 77% chance of success, received 36 cents. But now, guys, we've gone down to the 110. We can now get 53 cents or $53 per lot or $530 per 10 contracts. The platform is telling us we have a 55% chance of success. The reason being is we went from 113 down to 110. And we're kind of, the platforms view it as us crowding the market. But we know through Elliott that we have a very good belief that we should not get above 110. And we can actually trade closer to the market than the, st the typical standard deviations give us and, and actually make more money. 
The platform says we only have 55% chance for success. I believe it's just as high as this, a 77% chance. So I still believe we have better than the 75% chance of success by getting 53 cents instead of 36 cents for the trade. Okay. Here's another example. Um, Steve, uh, do, do, what are the numbers above the one standard deviation? Um, I don't no tell give me more information steve well, i don't uh, tell me which one you're looking at numbers above the standard deviation okay um while you're typing that in let me know on toss um oh 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 numbers above standard deviation oh those are oh you're talking right here those are the um the standard deviations for the other options so here are the november weeklies so 20.24, um, those are the standard deviations. Each monthly option or each option series has a different standard deviation. So I, I bet you that's what you're asking. Okay. Uh, let me know. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so that's that. So price line, here's another trade we did. And this isn't, uh, this isn't a webinar saying, hey, here's what we did. Um, you know, this is just reinforcing the concepts. Uh, we did it in price line. We sold a 1180, 1185 call for $1.95. Okay, that was way inside the standard deviations for price line. Okay, so we have a wave four in progress looking for a decline down from the 1200. So we sold the 1180, 1185. And again, if you're new to options, don't worry. I will explain this. We will have a class coming up. If you're completely lost, don't worry. I just want you to understand the concepts of implied volatility, standard deviations, and the actual mechanics of, of placing the trades we can worry uh, about later. Okay, so here's the here's the follow up. Uh, we we did the trade on September 23rd, which was right here. We sold the 1180, 1185 because the wave count says we should not move above 1184. So if we did the 1180, 1185, we want the trade to basically be stopped out right above invalidation for this particular Elliott wave. We then got the move down. We covered at a dollar 27 and dollar 10. We, we sold the spread for $1.95 and bought it back for $1.27, $1.10. Okay, now let's get into Elliott. Okay, Elliott's very important and Elliott goes in extremely well with um, options markets. Okay, there are um, people who believe in the world that um, Elliott has shortcomings because there are multiple possibilities. Elliott is um, basically a, the best discretionary um technical analysis methodology out there. It's based on classic Dow theory from Charles Dow, who you guys should know, who showed us very correctly in the in the early um, 20th century that market trends have three phases, accumulation, widespread participation, and distribution. Okay, uh, so Elliott Wave is, is rooted in, in classic technical analysis given to us by Charles Dow, who is the founder of the Dow Jones Corporation. Okay. Um, Elliot is, um, and I know you can't see it because that's kind of off the screen, uh, Andrew Baptiste, technical analyst at Morgan Stanley, quoted for 20 years, the wave principle is a simple rule-based methodology that allows a practitioner to dissect the mindset to, to uh, define attractive risk-reward trading. It's a game plan. Those of you who read Market Wizards, um, Paul Tudor Jones, who's my hero. If you haven't read Market Wizards, please do. You must. He also says, uh, allows one to create incredibly favorable risk reward opportunities. I attribute a lot of my own success to the Elliott Wave approach. Tudor, if you don't know who Tudor is, um, he's donated over a billion dollars to charity because he's worth over $3 billion from his hedge fund, Tudor Investments, and he is a Elliott Wave practitioner. I actually went to uh, one of his... Um, um, money raising it's called the robin hood foundation I actually went to it this year and uh, i watched them raise 56 million dollars in the room in like two hours um i missed meeting tutor by like a minute i went with my old boss who, who took me i went to park the car and tutor walked by and said hello and i really wanted to meet him i didn't get to i missed it by two minutes because i was parking the damn car so anyways, that's Elliot. It's not difficult. It's not like it's written in Chinese. It is very understandable. Okay. So I'm going to just skip the rules for now. We're going to save this for the next class um, because we are running short on time. But basically, I do want to make the analogy that um, Elliot goes hand in hand with FIP. 
Okay, Fibonacci and Elliott go hand in hand. Fib is how we begin to really pick out the option strikes, the option expirations to know right where we want to be trading in the markets. Okay, the analogy that I use is, you know, you go to somewhere like Vegas and you say, all right, I want to walk from Flamingo up to, um, I want to go to the Wynn and go shopping. Okay, so you're like, all right, it's one, two blocks. Yeah, no problem. Two blocks in New York City takes like 10 minutes. In Vegas, this would take like an hour and a half. Because what you're missing is the scale. Oh, got it. This little bit is uh, is a thousand feet, and I blew up this, so this is like probably five thousand feet. So it's probably like a mile away. So Fib tells you how long each wave should last, both in price and time. In price and time is how we pick out the option strikes and expirations. Okay. So the tools of Fib are retracements, projections, extensions, expansions. There are times for each tool of Fib. Okay, they isolate support and resistance within an Elliott trend. Okay, using Elliott and Fib, you buy at support and you sell at resistance. Okay, it is a game plan. Okay, here's an example SP. This is just textbook Elliott stuff that we teach. This was back in August. Looking for SP to get up to 2000, then back away. Okay, there we go. We got up to 2000, and you know we've since backed away. All right. Fourth waves. Let's dive into some specifics of, of uh, corrections. Here's where we're really going to start putting on some option trades. All right. So, um, Mary, I'm going to take a look after. I'm going to cruise through the material, but I definitely want to um, address that question. And uh, T-O-D-E-S, I, I see your question as well. And I'm going to dive into that as well. Those are ones I can get off on a tangent, but I, I'm running short on time. I want to get through the material. Okay. Um, so, triangles are very important. And triangles give us one of the best premium selling opportunities out there in the market. It reflects a balance of forces, often occurs in the fourth wave position. All right, so let me go back up to the Elliott in a good five wave move. One, two, three. A lot of times triangles happen in that fourth wave move. Okay, so they often occur in the fourth wave position. Uh, it's a five wave move, and they'll label with letters. So A is the first wave, B is the second wave, C, D, and E. Okay. Notice that the tops get lower, the bottoms get higher. It's it's a consolidation pattern. Okay. Often lasts longer in time than wave two. So what does that mean? Okay. When you have the beginning of a five wave move up, wave four. This is very important for option traders and specifically for option sellers, premium sellers. Wave four will typically last longer than wave two. Okay, so when you get wave one up, wave two down, and a wave three, and you say, well, Todd, how do I know if I have five wave, uh, how do I know if I'm in a five wave move? Well, it's, it's pretty easy. If you have wave one up, that breaks down into five smaller waves. Wave two is three wave correction, and then we get another five wave push. There's a decent chance you're in a wave, you're in a five wave move. We then look for the initial pullback. If the initial pullback has not reached equality, Time equality of 4v2. Okay, what this means basically if wave two lasted, let's call it 100 hours, we'd expect wave four to last at least 100 hours. And more typically, we get out to 161%, which would be 161 hours. Okay, so here's one of the first setups. If you can count five waves up in one, down in two, and five waves in three, and I don't have them broken down for simplicity's sake inside of waves three and one, and you get the initial pullback, a three-wave move that has not yet reached 100%, you have the possibility of moving sideways until at least 100% and out towards 161 and even sometimes 200%. Okay, so one of the best trades that we like to do is we like to, on the first pullback, following a wave three move, is to be short premium and we can do it with iron condors we can do it with call credit spreads um, above there's a variety of different ways the best part about it is usually when you're in a wave three move you have high implied volatility because you have just a big breakout in wave three so implied volatility is high there's a good time to be shorting premium shorting high implied volatility because you're expecting a fourth wave and as i said Fourth waves are triangles. Triangles are those volatility compression vehicles, and that's when you can be short that premium and collect that decreasing uh, volatility, uh, be 
short premium via, as I said, call credit spreads above, iron condors, a couple different ways. That's what we did in um, in uh, the uh, NASDAQ today. We, we did the example in uh, IWM. Here is a perfect example. UNG, nat natty gas trade I did back in the uh, first part of this year. So we had wave one up, ABC down. We had a nice, beautiful wave three. In wave three, you can see five waves. There's one, two. Nice breakout in three, four, five. Perfect. We get the push down. Here's your first pullback. Can this be all of wave four? 100% no. Because usually wave four lasts at least as long as wave two in terms of time. Wave three started here, and equality would be out here at the end of February, and more likely would be 161% out here in March. So here's a perfect opportunity to be short premium. Okay, you can be short premium below, short premium above, because you expect wave three to stay within this boundary right here. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this guy inside of this boundary. So what you can do is you can be short uh, calls up here, short calls. I'll just put a minus for short, and you can be short puts below the wave for support. Collect the premium, and then is implied volatility, which did this on the way up in wave three. As wave four sets in and goes sideways, most likely in a triangle, then implied volatility will move down. And if implied volatility is moving down and you are short calls and puts, that means you make money because the value of those puts and calls will go down as wave four sets in and the market digests this massive move that it just had. This is one of the highest probability trades that we have. And remember, you can go over and trade based on standard deviations that the platforms give you, but based on the objectives of the Elliott Wave and FIB levels, um, we can actually trade tighter. Okay, uh, Here's actually the trade we put on. I did ABC down. Um, here's the three hour. I started up here on the daily, got on the three hour ABC. Um, actually, we, um, we sold puts. Okay, so I actually sold puts down here. Um, this was the natty gas. Um, this is the underlying. So I actually sold at the money puts in UNG on uh, February 22nd. Uh, I sold 19 puts a couple times, eight times, um, just to be short, which is a um, short premium strategy, just playing for the B wave bounce. I know we're not going to get to the highs. Once we get up here, I got out of the trade. And we actually look to put on the other side of the position of the iron condor. But basically, this is the time to be short premium. We did it with downside puts. You could also do it with calls up here, but we did it in the puts uh, for that. And that was a very nice trade. Okay. Uh, S&P. Um, the S&P, before we got to 2,000, guys, it was a triangle. All right. Here's another perfect example. We did A. We did B. We did C. We didn't quite get to the 100% for V2 time. That means we have more to go in um, the S&P. S&P did, in fact, carve out a triangle before we got up to 2,000. Okay, so this is a good time to be short premium with short calls above, short puts below, knowing that we haven't reached the 100% for V2 time relationship yet. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to push through that. Um, and let's go right to debit spreads. We talked about credit. Now let's do debit. Here's where the big money is made. Okay, we've talked about waves three and four. Let's back up and go to waves one and two much earlier in the sequence. Okay, now let's go with this. All right, how do you know a new five wave moves underway? Okay, let's say we have a long extended decline. If you see a little five wave move up, Okay, after a long extended decline, possibility that we have another five wave move to go up in wave three. Okay, it could be C, but it could, it, it, either way, we should get, if you get a little five wave move up, followed by three wave pullback, after a long extended decline, you see five up, three down, after a long extended decline, probability say you have another five wave move to go, and, which actually could feed on itself and go much further. Okay. Here's the time where you can get aggressive and buy premium, go long premium. Okay. I love taking this setup. Initial five wave move up, three wave move down. What I like to do is go long um, the at the money call and then sell a higher at the money call to do a debit spread. Okay. This is where you can make real money.
Um, and actually today, this is what we did in FXY. Okay, we got the first initial move higher in the FXY. Let me see if I can pull this trade up real quick. Uh, I don't know if I have it loaded or not. Um, this is a trade you guys can participate in. Um, let me just go to the actual. Uh, I don't have um, don't have uh, the Elliott Wave charts up, but let me just do it here on this. Okay. Um, let me do it in dollar yen. Just show you the setup. We'll go down to a, like a five minute. Okay. So we are starting to get something that resembles a real, um, you know, let me just do an FXY. I just want to keep it simple. We already talked about this trade. Um, all right. So I'm sorry I have all these different indicators on here. And this is the FXY, so it's a little choppy. It's not a full 24-hour market, but you can see price down here in the candles. We did one, two. We had a big breakout in three, four, five. Okay, so we have the beginnings of a five-wave move up. And I'm down on the 15-minute chart. And this is after, guys, a seriously long decline. Here's the daily. Here's back to the 15 we have a one, two, three, four, five. This is probably the start of something that takes us higher. So what we did today is we bought the, um, let me see my position, what did I do? I did the, um, oops, FXY. We did the 89.91 call spread. Okay, so we bought 89s, sold 91s. What we're doing there is we bought 89s, sold 91s because we see a five wave move up. This could be a pullback here at wave two, which is fine. And then we're looking for a wave three move up. Okay, if we get the pullback in two, we're going to look to get more directional up in wave three. Okay, this is the time, this little three wave move is what I'm waiting for. So I just got involved. I did the first part of a long call debit. If we get a three wave push back down, I'm going to call that wave two. And here's where we're going to get really aggressive for the move up. There are very specific times where you can buy options, and this is one of them. Remember, I showed you up in the implied volatility chart that on FXY, it's actually quite cheap relative to the last couple years. Okay. Um, TLT was another example of, uh, of a long call. Uh, we just looking for a little wave one, little uh, two on September 22nd. We did the 114, 116 call spread, uh, looking for a little five wave move up. We did get the five wave move up. Uh, and then we did uh, 114, 116, just a short term little trade in and out. Uh, got out way too early in that trade, but we were in early, out early and made max profit there. Uh, thanks, Steve. 8991, you know what's going on. Uh, credit spreads. Okay. We talked about this quickly. Ellie, uh, fourth waves are good opportunities to do credit spreads, but also once you can count a completed fifth wave move into Fibonacci price and time resistance, um, time price with diverging indicators, this is the great time and one of the safest ways that I know to counter trend trade a market. This is the time you bring standard deviations in. You can do it very safely. And this is part of trading, trading against the trend. Elliott and Fib is the only way I know how to do it. Okay, guys. Um, so as I said, we're going to do something coming up here uh, in two weeks. All right. It's going to be the 21st to the 22nd. Uh, it's going to be two days. It's going to be the ultimate beginners option event. All right. What you want to do if you're interested is it is a two day webinar. We're going to do the first day is going to be concepts, basic option trading. I went over a lot more complicated stuff than we'll be going over in this seminar. OK, but it's going to be live. It's going to be online. It's going to be about three hours of material the first day covering all the trading setups and alerts I use to find these trades. Most importantly, how to decipher the daily wave count and trade inside of the standard deviation levels, how to short change them, how to go with the standard deviations with those credit spreads that I showed you. We're going to start discuss risk management, capital allocation to share your long run success in the profession.
Um, if you're ready, and I have a lot of existing clients on the on the call here um, who have been asking for an intro option trading class, this is it. The next day we're going to do live trading. So I'm going to be trading live um, from 9.30 through lunchtime on the 22nd. Okay, so we're going to be trading live based on all the concepts that we go over the first day. It's going to be uh, recorded. It's going to be archived. Uh, you will have access to it forever. We have a new system in uh, we've, we've built a new system at Trading Analysis. So basically what you're going to do is go to Trading Analysis members. Once you've, um, once you've purchased the system, you're going to go to tradinganalysismembers.com. You're going to be able to log in with your course information and then get all of the archives. Okay. You're going to have access to all the course materials, have access to the archives forever. Okay. So go to, um, the ultimate beginners options event right here. Um, it is, uh, let's see here. Let me give you the, uh, URL it's tradinganalysismembers.com forward slash options webinar. Okay. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put this uh, link in the, um, I'll put it in the chat window right now. Uh, it will be limited. Um, I think we're going to cap it at 50. Okay. So we're going to cap it at 50, 50 people because what we're going to do is I need a bio and I'm going to work with every single one of you. I've done this and learned to trade many times before. Uh, we're going to need a bio. Um, so send it to me and tell me a little bit about your trading experience, what you hope to accomplish, um, challenges you need to overcome, successes you've had, anything you'd like to, to work with. Um, we're going to go through each one of those bios. So to start, um, go to um, send me your bio if you're going to register. Remember, it is limited to 50. Okay, so here is the site. You just go down here. It's the two-day webinar. Uh, it, it is the price right there. Uh, we will, as you guys know, probably go beyond 9 o'clock as I like to talk. As you guys know, we're going to go over uh, two hours of instruction, including course, core concept, explained in simple terms. This is for newer traders. I understand that many of my clients are new to options, and this is going to be the beginner's guide. Um, you're going to learn how to drastically shorten your learning curve, how to buy and sell options, how to buy and sell option spreads, how to trade those ranges for income, how to get those wealth building wave to pull back those debit spreads to make um, those bigger hit trades rather than the smaller income trades. Um, price and time, we're going to be focusing a lot. Wave four verse two, uh, wave four verse three, how to pinpoint your um how to pinpoint your your expiration and strike ex um, your ideal strikes and expiries. Uh, we're going to be doing it on the um, I have interactive brokers, I have Thinkorswim, and I have TradeStation. So we'll, we'll cover option trades on all three of those platforms. Most importantly, how to defend trades that go wrong, control risk, never blow up another account. If you're trading our style, you should never blow up another account ever. Period. Okay, you go through this program, you should never blow up another account. We are going to show you how to determine risk on every single trade, acknowledge the risk before you go in, and you should never blow up. If you've done it before, I've done it, it is a bad experience, but this is the key. Do not ever lose another trading account. Uh, all questions will be answered much like I did here, and I still have two questions to answer, I know. Um, and then day two live trading, uh, we're going to be just like this, back and forth. We're going to be trading them on multiple platforms. We're going to be covering the markets. Uh, October is a busy month. Um, this is the month that uh, the market usually crashes, so it could be interesting. Uh, will be interactive, as I said. It is limited to 50, so we are going to um, be able to take everyone's questions Um we're going to walk through every step of the trade. Uh, I'm not going to leave anything um, confusing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to answer all questions, review the concepts taught, and most importantly, uh, all sessions will be recorded, archived, and available for viewing. Plus, I will uh, read all of your bios um, and um, return to you with an email on how to um, take advantage of that. All right, guys. So, um, 
hope that helps. Um, go ahead and, and grab that now if you'd like to be involved. As I said, we will cap it at 50. I'm sure it will sell out by tomorrow. So if you want to be involved, go ahead and do it. Um, again, the URL is um, tradinganalysismembers.com forward slash options webinar. Two-day event, recorded archive. As a finishing note for my hero, Paul Tudor Jones, why not make your life a pursuit of happiness rather than pain? And this is the important part. Um, trading does not have to be painful. If you're prepared, if you understand the risk, if you understand how to defend trades, if you know how to not risk more than you want on any single trade, trading should be about enjoyment. Okay, I love getting up and trading every morning. I've been trading since I was 21. I'm 35, so I've been doing it for 14 years, about half my life, not quite. Um, is that right? Yeah, no, actually, I've been trading since I was 18, so yeah, half my life now. Um, so uh, it should be enjoyable, and, and if you can come in and quantify risk and you understand exactly what you're here to do, if you have goals, you know the strategies you need to have, then uh, it should be enjoyable. All right. It shouldn't be a stressful experience. Shouldn't be blowing up accounts and going down massive amounts. Um, with the concepts we're going to teach you, you should never have an uncomfortable loss um, again. Okay. And when I'm saying uncomfortable loss, I'm talking about like a like a, a a devastating loss. Okay. So we don't do that. That's not what we do uh, at Trading Analysis. We have um, very strict uh, risk parameters in place. Um, all of our members have access to um, the trade desk and we lay out very specific um, entries, exits. We have stop losses on almost all positions. If we don't have a stop loss, it's a fixed investment. You know, it's a debit spread. You know, we pay 20 cents or $200 for the option and that's it. So, you know, you should never, you know, $200 is, is all we can lose. But if it is a uh, unlimited, uncapped risk um, trade, we will have a stop loss on the underlying. Very specific instructions on everything we do um, in the trade. So that is very important to us. Um, so as you know, we do go through... Um, trade desk we just went through, the chart room we walked through, all the major markets that we're trading. Uh, we post charts based in the money maps over here. Uh, you can have access to all of the charts we're looking at, the LA Wave count, the analysis and the strategy for each market we're trading. There's the S&P. Um, and then we do a daily video uh, every morning. Um, and it's a, basically a 15 or 20 minute video of exactly what I'm trading and what we're looking to do in setups uh, for the day. So it's live interactive and I just walk through. This one happens to be 22 minutes. So that's the, uh, that's the service. And as I said, the, um, the, um, the beginner's guide is not yet posted on the site. I'm just giving it to you guys first. It will be posted tomorrow. So for only $197, you will understand how to trade options from the very beginning. So this course has been a long time coming. I've had a lot of clients ask for it. Um, they need a beginner's class, and here it is. So um, that'll be that. All right, so let me answer these questions. Okay. Um, T.O., if Sosnoff and others have tested this 45-D3, uh, don't uh, lagos. I'm assuming you mean... Um, Lagos or other market makers. Uh, I'm sure you mean uh, algos. Uh, algos um, and find ways to create pain for you. So it's a good question. Um, if they've tested the 45 day theory, um, remember, it's a good question you're asking. Remember uh, what I did all the way up here at the beginning, uh, which basically, oh, awesome. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, I showed you basically that uh, like 70, I forgot the numbers. I'll, I'll restart PowerPoint here as it just crashes. Um, a large percent of the options traded today in, I think it was Tesla, uh, were out of the money, right? So, uh, you know, these guys are, the market makers are taking the other side of the trade, right? So if they are providing liquidity, which a lot of times they are, sometimes they can match up buyers and sellers, but if 72% of the of these options were out of the money, okay, delta zero to 40, basically that means that the, the market makers took the other side of that trade. So so 72% of the, the, the puts traded today in TLT were at a, a percent probability of going in the money at 30%. So put other ways, the market makers 
are long 70% of the options traded today that have a, sorry, let me say that market makers are short 70% of the options traded today that have a 70% chance of finishing out of the money. So let me say that again. Market makers are short 70% of the options today that have a 70% chance of making them money. So by trading on the side of the market makers, okay, you can't have algos go and sniff that out because the entire system it would collapse. That's not the nature of the majority of option buying out there. Sure, there are algos and systems out there who generate um, very, very consistent returns by putting on these strategies, but they're in the minority. The majority of the options traded out there, massive amount of options traded out there are buying options away from the market to um, protect existing positions, long stock positions. There's a there's a, something called a volatility skew, basically puts in stock indexes trade uh, at a more expensive, um, they're trade more expensive compared to the similarly um, price calls. You know, the $20 put below the market in the S&P is going to be more expensive than the $20 call above the market because funds are constantly buying protection for their portfolio. So puts inherently are more expensive. So that means as option sellers, we prefer to sell puts because we get more money for it. Plus markets crash down. They don't crash up. Okay. Markets don't crash up. They crash down. So that means the volatility is likely to be seen on the downside more than the top side. So when you sell puts, you are going to, are going to make more money. So there's just, it's just built into the infrastructure and that's what we're looking to do. Now there are funds that trade that way and make very consistent returns selling standard deviation. One standard deviation puts in calls. Uh, they have a 68% chance of being right. If the trades don't work, they, they adjust the positions, they roll the positions. Um, but no, it, it's not something that can be sniffed out and the edges is taken away because that's just the whole nature of option markets. Um, Mark, yes, 197 gets you access to the members only archive. As I said, you'd go to, um, you would go to trading analysis members, and this is a new system. We've, we've done, a, we've done a nice investment in this trading analysis members.com. You'll be given a, uh, a login, use your email, you set up a password. When you log in, you'll have access to the archive, um, forever. Okay, so you just log in. Um, all courses that you have will be located right there, uh, so you can view those uh, forever. So, yep, forever. Um, yes, George, I will be trading um, live capital, my account, winners, losers, and I. That's how I. That's how I do things. Absolutely. Um, yep. Let's see. Uh, Steve been trading directional options for four years. Finally, after learning Elliot, I can still learn a lot more about Elliot. And selling premium took a ton of pressure off myself and dra dramatically increased returns. Awesome, Steve. I just I love that. Um, let me read that again. Been trading directional options for four years. Finally, after learning Elliott Wave, I can still learn a lot more about Elliott Wave, which we all can. And selling premium took a ton of pressure off myself and dramatically increased returns. I mean, that's just you couldn't get a better. Um, Description of what we just talked about than that. So well, well done. Um, like that a lot. Um, well put. Mary, uh, notice a 61.8% uh, pullback on the Russell would bring the index back down to monthly support trend line. Uh, we can take a look at that. Unfortunately, I closed my uh, Elliott Wave workspace. I can bring it back up. Let me just do it over here on um, on, on TOS. Are you T? Let's go to monthly. I'll just do weekly feed. 618 in the monthly, huh? Mary, 61.8% pullback on Russell would bring the index down to monthly. Oh, 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 you're talking about uh, pullback on the rally. I bet you're talking about drawing fib retracement right there. I bet you that's 61. Yeah, exactly, right there. Yep, exactly. Uh, we're actually short for that. Uh, we were short that we sold call credit spreads above the market and we took max profit on the way down. Uh, we actually had that trade on. So, yep, totally, totally agreed. Um, Mary is talking about this move. And this is interesting in the Russell. Um, we talked about it. Uh, so that's one. That's two. You know, how far down should the Russell get? You know, here's something we didn't really talk about. Um, if this is, in fact, the top. Uh, we're at a very interesting level. And I actually went home long puts in the Russell. 
uh, for this reason. So there's one, if that's one, if that's two, and in fact we're breaking down in wave three, uh, we have a downside target that I want to show you in the Russell. If this is in fact wave one, and we're moving down in wave three, so there's one, there's two, there's three, the, um, the minimum distance you're looking for is equality between one and three. So what that means, you do Fibonacci extensions down to one. Then you project that level um, from the end of wave two, which Mary pointed out was 618. Look where we closed, right at the 100% in the Russell today. And we closed right on the lows. I mean, it was wild today, right on the lows. Look at this. Here's the 15-minute chart of the Russell futures. Look at that close. <laughs> I mean, when you get something that bearish, like right on the dead but low of the market. Um, this is a very interesting level. And when you get such a weak close, and we were preceded by, they tried to reverse the market here with this candle, but then came right back on it. I think we're going to get down to the textbook 1.618 relationship in the Russell, which is basically if wave one is, let's call it from 1,200 to 1,100, 100 Russell points, your minimum target's another 100 points down in wave three, but then typically wave three is longer than one by 161.8%. So typically it's gonna go another 61 points lower. So we're targeting 1,000 on the Russell. I have long puts right now on the Russell. Um, I'm gonna to look to get a lot more directional because I think we're in a third wave. This is the time where you make significant money by being long puts for a move down. Once we begin to settle out in wave four, which should look like that, that's when you begin selling premium because implied volatility, look, implied volatility is going to get very expensive up here as this guy continues, as the Russell continues to decline. Okay, uh, hold on, let me get my trend line. As this guy goes down this way, Okay, implied volatility is going to get very expensive and go up here. That's when you want to be short calls up here and you want to be short puts down here in anticipation of a triangle or a flat or um, one of the Elliott Wave corrections in Wave 4. Then once volatility does this, starts, I can't draw very well in thicker swim, come on. Once volatility starts doing that, and you are short based on a range bound strategy, that's when you're collecting money. So we're going to try to make profits on the debits, debit spreads here, and then try to collect premium on range four. And then ultimately, we should go down and move down in wave five. So that was just, Russell was very, very interesting today. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, is it? Better of oh, the most recent bull run. Um, yeah, 618. So, Mary, that must be it. Uh, Steve, is it better to wait for two of three to buy PDS? Um, give me more information on that one, Steve. Not funny. Is it better to wait for two of three to buy PDS? Hmm. Uh, put debit spreads. Got it. Uh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, okay. So, I see what you're saying. Um, if you, all right, so you're saying wave two of three. Um, 100%. I mean, that's the ideal. Um, and we actually had that trade, Steve. If you remember, we had um, wave two of three on the downside. We did, um, actually, no, we had, we had, um, we sold call credit spreads. We were short in here. So you're, so in wave three, Steve, what you're saying is wave three is going to break down into five waves. So we're doing one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four. So you're saying the ideal opportunity to be doing um, long put spreads, uh, put debit spreads would be right here on the wave two pullback, either on this degree or this degree. So absolutely. I mean, that's the time where you just get volatility expansion. Um, that's when the big time breakdown is. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we, I think we did it with, I think I was a little conservative. I think I did it with um, call credit spreads 
in um, in IWM back in September. Sep. Let's go back to the trade desk. Um, IWM. Yeah, uh, we did a short call vertical. Yep, on September twenty fifth. Um, I thought we did something earlier than that. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, but yeah, this was the short Russell. Uh, we did the one. We did the uh, 118, 119 call spread. So I was a little conservative on that, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. We sold uh, call credit spreads in um, the NASDAQ on the 22nd. Position closed. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, yep, so that was the that was the long um, that was the long puts in IWM. Okay, um, Graham, yeah, absolutely. So guys, um, I hope that helped. Um, wow, a lot of people stayed on. Uh, really appreciate that. So again, the um, the uh, well, uh, the uh, the address here. If you guys like to get involved in the course, uh, we will start in two weeks. It will cap out at fifty. Um, let's go to um, there it is so again trading analysis members.com forward slash options uh, webinar and I will drop that in the chat window one more time if you guys want to be involved uh, should be a lot of fun there is the um, link right there I put it in and um, oops. remember, those of you who are involved, uh, you need to send me the um, your bio. Okay, so so first thing is go to um, tradinganalysismembers.com options webinar. So number one, sign up. Number two, send. Todd bio at Todd at trading analysis.com and analysis.com. And in that you want to include um, history of trading, including markets, uh, years, success, failures, shortcomings we would like to overcome, the strengths you currently possess, okay, uh, here's another important one, desired Time frame of holding positions, hours, minutes per day spent on trading. Uh, this is another important one, G. Broker that holds your account. And if you don't have one yet, there's no problem. Uh, we get discounted commissions with TradeStation and Thinkorswim. Sorry for misspelling TradeStation. Okay, so we get discounted commissions. So let us know if you have an open account and we can save you commissions, which is really important. Okay, and any, you know, closing comments, um, you know, what, what material and concepts you hope to have covered, to have addressed in the summer. All right, so I'll include that in the uh, in the link that goes out with this. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, 
Greg, you're asking the difference between gold and silver. It's a good question. Um, so the only difference is you don't have access. The, the silver doesn't have access to the chart room. And the chart room is really where, um, you know, we do a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of all the Elliott Wave counts in different markets. And we do a lot of intermarket analysis stuff in here. We post all kinds of um, stuff, you know, in terms of market observations, what's going on. Um, you know, we... We post updates, you know, here's like a little 30 minute chart of gold that matches up with the um, preferred count over here in the gold market. So you have access to the chart room and then obviously everything posts in here. So uh, what's cool about this is that here's the chart and you can kind of blow the chart out too. So you can get a detailed look of, uh, of the chart that we're looking at. Um, so anything that it's up to the date, up to date, you know, up to the minute, you know, we post everything right there. You get the trades first. Um, so we post them up right away in Trader Talk um, uh, positions we we put on, and then they go over into the trade desk. Uh, also SMS out. We have uh, SMS for everything. But big difference between silver and gold is you have access to the chart room. Okay, uh, Graham, appreciate that. Uh, very nice. Uh, let's see. Um, Bill, the uh, the platform we're, we're using is the same uh, right here, which is go to go to webinar, which is very good. Um, I th I think it's good at least. So we're going to be using go to webinar. Um, thought how long you've been trading options? <laughs> um, I actually started trading when I was uh, twenty two. I started trading options. Uh, in San Diego, so when I was 22, I'm 35 now with a birthday coming up, 36, so 14 years, I guess. Um, let's see, FXY, yeah, we we um we didn't on on today's uh, um credit spread. I did not get filled at 29 cents on this 89.88 put credit spread. Uh, but we did get filled on the 89.91 um, long put vertical. So we did get that. So we'll have to cancel that one out. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow on the open. We could get filled. Um, so we'll, we'll leave um, that one open. Um, Mary, is it, uh, is it that people think rates uh, staying lower or just dollar related? Um, I think it's pure risk aversion, Mary. Um, today was insane um, watching bonds rally. So here is the chart from today. Um, Todd, market watch. So, so um, bonds were just ripping all day. And I think it's so funny. Here, let me squeeze this up. I think it's so funny that the Fed is now done purchasing bonds in October. And, t and now is the day that they really kind of break out. I think, I think it's so counterintuitive, which makes perfect sense in the markets. Um, you know, just... In October, when the Fed is done buying bonds, look, we see the, some of the strongest move. I mean, bonds have been an uptrend for a while, but now we, we're getting a serious breakout. And I think it's just risk aversion. I think there's too much going on in the world. I'm really worried about stocks. Volatility is about to increase. Volatility is increasing. Um, bonds are on the rise as a sign of risk aversion. And I think people are moving out of stocks. And that's really going to what make option trading fun with the volatility back up here. As the VIX keeps going higher, um, that's what makes options trading uh, more and more fun and more opportunities for profit. So the volatility index is moving up, which is uncertainty in the S&P. You got bonds moving up. Uh, crude is getting killed. We were long crude. We had to stop out of that position, which was a bummer, but that happens. Um, crude's coming off. I mean, that's there's just every reason in the world to right now uh, to want to be um, short. Um, and even the ticks on the close today, ticks were just getting slammed into the close here. Minus 1,000 readings. That's institutional selling. You know, we had one, two, three, um, almost an hour of – it was an hour. We had 1,000 there. So an hour of institutional selling into the close. Um, so I just – I think this market's coming off. I think this market's coming off. The Russell broke down through uh, key support on the daily, which should have been a triple bottom low. 
at about 1080, I think it was 1080. Yeah, we had a low here in the Russell. Once, twice, three times we closed right in the lows. The Rus Russell's breaking down. Remember, we have the 1.6 relationship down in 1,000. So I think people are running to bonds for safety. And as stocks come off, volatility moves up, and, and that's good for option trading. Uh, okay, just answer another questions here. Uh, Steve, sorry about that. What have you found with deep in the money options? So, um, what I like to do sometimes is buy um, um, deep in the money options that more or less act like stock, right? So, let's say we wanted to do um, IWM or let's just do FXY. Okay, let's just say we want to do a spread. We wanted to more or less trade the stock. Okay, so. Let's say we think the yen is going to rally, and if stocks going off, stocks going lower, bonds going higher, uh, FXY should rally. So if you want to just buy 100 shares of FXY, it's trading at $90.17. Okay, times 100 shares, it's going to cost you $9,000 to get a hold of 100 shares. Okay, $9,000. If you wanted to just buy the calls. You could do something like this. Go to like Delta 70s right here. Okay. So Delta 70s right here. Um, Delta 69 close enough. That basically means as a 70% chance of finishing the money. Um, put another way, if the price of FXY goes from 90.17 to 91.17, this option is going to go up 70 cents. So it's going to go from $1.80 up to $2.50. Okay, so a pure 100 option is going to be the 86 calls. We're trading at $90, so it's $4 in the money. Those are your hundreds. Basically, what that means is if FXY goes up a buck, these options are going up a buck. All right, Delta 70 is good because what can happen is if the, 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 the move works, these Delta 70s will become Delta 100s. So this basically means stock. Okay, so if you wanted to buy 100 shares, you just got to buy single. You're going to have to go on the ask. That's what the market maker is asking you to pay. Go down to one share or one contract. Trading at $1.80. It's going to cost you $180 to buy Delta 70 calls. And basically what that means is you're getting 70% of the impact of a $1 move in the underlying. So instead of putting up $9,000 to buy 100 shares, you're putting up $180 and getting 70% of the bang for the buck right and the, and the, the best part is is the theta is not terrible right the theta is how much money you're gonna lose a day you're gonna lose a penny a day on these options so theta is not that bad there okay so that's the reason um those are the deep of the money options that we like to trade uh, if we would just want to take an outlight outright position in the market because eventually those things will if the trade is right will become delta 100s Okay. Um, Mary, I first found your stuff on Money Emotion. Love your stuff, but live in Sydney. I'll email you with other questions. That's okay. Great webinar. Thanks, Mary. And keep in mind, uh, Jackie's in uh, Sydney as well, too. So if you ever need any help from a local guy, Professor is uh, is my right hand man. And uh, hey, more he's right there in Sydney. If you ever want to um, have some local help, thanks, Mary. Appreciate that. And I know you guys just went through a time change, so I know you're big time reeling from that time change, which was what, two days ago. So, um, Mark, why do you need such a detailed bio? I, you, you can leave out details if you don't want. Um, I mean, I think this is something every trader should have, you know, um, I think, you know, it's very important to, to have this written out, but you can leave out anything you want, but these are things I'd like to see. You don't have to put everything down. <laughs> Uh, Jason, do you continue to be the man? <laughs> Thanks for all the knowledge. It's priceless, Jason. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, Todd, did you manage? How did you manage your biggest win in loss psychologically? Oh God! All right. So here's my biggest trade. Um, I was trading for the fund. That's funny. I was trading for the fund, and it was uh, I think it was 2007. And it's funny, I was living in Hoboken, New Jersey, and um, I was trading, it was, I was trading for the FX fund, 
And it was 2007, 2008, and things were really just starting to move. Yen carry trade was coming off hardcore. And the way the fund set up was I didn't have like an account. I didn't have like a million dollar account that I traded. I had, we all traded one account, but it was, um, you, you kept track of how much money you could lose in a month. So I had, I think my loss limit was like $150,000 I could lose in a month. Um, so I really like dollar yen lower. And I... I think, I don't know, I, you know, I, I had amount of money I could lose in a month, but I also um, had a position size, a max position size I could trade. I think my largest was like $10 million um, that I could trade. So I really liked dollar yen lower. I wrote up the trade and I sent it to my CIO, chief investment officer, and I said, I want to put on like a $20 million position. And I did it the day before and I was only looking for like 100 points in it. You know, I would have made some ridiculous money. Like, I don't know, would have been like 200000 I think, if that's right. Yeah, $200,000. And um, so I put the trade on. He, he okayed me for the larger size. I put the trade on. It got filled at like 5.30 in the morning. They called me. I think I was trading it with Goldman or or maybe it was even Lehman at the time. I think we were trading through Lehman Brothers. And they filled it. And I had to drive from Hoboken to Bedminster, which is actually the next town over from where I, where I am now. And it's like a 45 minute drive. And I did have quotes on my phone at the time. It was old school phones back then. And I'm watching the trade. I'm like 50, 60 points of the money with like $20 million position on. And I also have some serious money and I'm doing like a hundred miles an hour, <laughs> like as fast as I can through rush hour. I'm not doing a hundred, but I was at some point. And I'm watching them, you know, I called in, I said, move my stop to break even. And I'm watching it on my phone as I'm driving and the thing is ticking. I'm driving to the trade desk in Bedminster and the thing is ticking back against me. The minute I walked into the trade desk to sit down to try to take some profits, it stopped me out of break even. So I had, you know, I was like 24, 25, a couple hundred thousand dollar position on in profits stopped out at exactly break even. And that for me, my break even trade was the most emotionally difficult trade I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Oh my God, it was rough. But, you know, I mean, that part of it now is, you know, with the phones that we have and the technology, like the Thinkorswim platform on the phone is amazing. You can do anything on a phone. So that, that stuff shouldn't happen anymore. So uh, that's funny you asked me that. Um, that's funny. Let's see, let's see. More questions. Uh, posted my charts here. All right, Mary, I'll take a look. Awesome, awesome. Uh, great webinar. Thank you very much. I uh, was difference between silver and gold. Yeah, I answered that one. Uh, Jason, appreciate that. Very nice, uh, very kind words. Okay, <laughs> Jackie, thanks. All right, guys, um, I'll end it there. So thanks a ton um, for the participation. Look forward to seeing you guys in two weeks um, for the Ultimate Beginners Options event. And again, the link is in the webinar in the uh, chat window right there. There it is for everyone. Uh, TradingAnalysisMembers.com forward slash options webinar. Two days. Content first day, live trading the second day. You'll have um, access forever on the or recorded archive. And if you could send in the bio, that would be great. Not um, going to throw you out if you don't send it in. But um, I think it's important to write these out. Every trader should have this. Um, before you uh, you dive into the markets. I think it's important to, uh, to lay that out. All right, guys. So thanks again. Have a great night. I'll post this up. Uh, we'll have this uh, archive out for tomorrow. And guys, have a great night. Talk to you soon.